Glow in the Dark Creepy Crawlies Gel Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to be doing a creepy crawlies that are glow in the dark um, nail art video that's using gel products. I'm using gel paint for this, you could also use gel polish if that's what you like. And so that's what this is about, it's just really fun designs and the techniques that I use you could throw in any design you want, Halloween or not. And this design itself I wouldn't say is overly Halloween, it's just kind of creepy crawlies basically like I like the video says it's creepy crawlies I love creepy crawlies and I would use this any time of the year so I hope you like it and don't forget to click subscribe to my future videos as well begin by painting all of your nails with a layer of gel base coat I'm going to paint all of my nails with black and this is some gel product you can use polish or paint you just want to make sure that the end result doesn't have a tacky layer so if you are using gel polish and it does apply either a tack free top coat or or you can also apply regular gel top coat and just clean off the tacky layer. So now I'm going to start on my pinky, which is kind of unusual. Usually I start on my index nail, but huh, we're switching things up a bit. So I'm going to start with my pinky and I'm going to be using white gel paint and I'm going to be painting a spider web to start. I'm just going to add a whole bunch of lines coming out from a center point. And then from there, I'm going to connect the lines with a little swooping lines i guess more lines and with these you want to make sure that your the little connector ones are a little bit curved and that they curve in so they curve towards that center point like everything is pulling towards that center point that and that point doesn't have to be in the middle of your nail you can put that anywhere you want and you don't have to fill the entire nail with spider webs i like spider webs and i'm doing a different nail with spider web so i decided to do the whole thing and then after you have your whole design painted on do not cure it hold off on the curing for just a second because you want to make sure that that is nice and wet and sticky. So then, while that is uncured, I'm going to be taking glow-in-the-dark pigment of all kinds of different colors, and I'm going to be pouring it over half the nail. So I started with green, and then I'm going to switch to blue, and I'm going to put the blue on the top half of the nail where there was still no, um, no pigment, and then I'm going to tap it off. And when you do it like this, you want to make sure that you tap the top section off to the side so that it doesn't go over the green. Cure it, remove the extra dust with a fluffy brush, and now I'm going to be working on the ring nail. Once again, using white gel paint, I'm going to be painting a whole bunch of circles in sets of two for eyeballs, and they can be different sizes, going at slightly different angles, up and down, all the way around the nail. And the reason I'm using white gel paint, it's not necessary. You could use white gel polish, but it has to be some kind of gel. Um, I, would, I also wouldn't use a builder gel either, or a 3D gel, because that's just so thick. Um, but gel paint or gel polish is probably the best idea and um, I'm using gel paint once again because of the opacity uh, there's so many different brands and some brands of gel polish are super opaque and you could definitely use those I just like my gel paint and so now I'm going to be pouring white pigment white glow-in-the-dark pigment over the eyeballs it's a little bit off-white it's sort of like a cream color it's the whitest thing I had I'm just going to pour that over, cure it, remove the excess dust with a fluffy brush, and then with a dotting tool, I'm going to go through and just paint on the little pupils, so a little dot on each of your circles. And if, and if as you were removing the extra pigment, it seemed like it wasn't all coming off, which could very well happen, sometimes it just likes to hold on and stick, you could take a a little brush that's dipped in some isopropyl alcohol and use that as an eraser just make sure you really clean the brush afterwards to get rid of any of that excess pigment so that the next thing you're using with it doesn't happen to glow unless of course you want to glow but then that's a whole another thing so then on my middle nail as i'm getting off track here i'm going to be doing a snake print and the reason and the part of the snake that i'm doing is i want his tummy to be down the middle so on snakes tummies they have those panels the little panel scales so that they can that they can move and so that's the beginning so those are really long rectangles but instead of actually being a rectangle with flat sides they kind of come to a point and then from there you fill in the sides with little tiny like hexagon shapes that start out with their point going in the point between the tummy panels just like that and it does not have to be perfect it doesn't have to be exact or anything just fill it in and it'll look cool regardless and now i'm going to be adding some yellow and orange pigments so i'm going to start with the neon yellow at the tip and once again, try to avoid getting any of the colors where you don't want them. So don't tap off the yellow up or tap off the orange down, if that makes sense. And just do that, cure, remove the excess dust, and that nail is good for the time being. So now my index nail, I'm going to be painting a little beetle. And so I'm going to start by doing his back, and I'm going to do two little, like, I'm not, because 
normally, if I can spit out what I'm trying to say here, normally when you're painting a bug, you would not leave the outlines in. You would paint them as a whole bug and then you would draw in the outlines later. I didn't want to do that because I want the glow in the dark to only be where I want it. So this is a little bit of a different process because especially on the very back of him, you need to leave that center line. So just make sure that you're careful when you do that to leave that line. And also when you're doing these, when you have something like this one where there's little outlines, make sure that they're large enough that they actually will be seen. Depending on the product you're using, sometimes gel likes to side, sort of slide out or um, pan out when it's curing. And when you do that, you might lose your little lines. It's very minimal that most of the time it doesn't do that too much, but it does move on its own a little bit every once in a while. So make sure that you're, you either really know your gel product to know how it's going to react or you make sure you leave enough space between all the little parts. For this one, I'm going to be making him pink and purple. The purple glow in the dark pigment isn't nearly as glowy and it doesn't show up as well against the black, but I absolutely love purple, so I couldn't resist using it. And I wanted to use all sorts of different colors on these rainbow glow in the dark ruby collies. Cure, remove the dust. And now on my thumb with white gel paint, as always, I'm going to be painting another spider web, but this time I'm going to make it so just three of those original lines with two sections in between them. And then I'm going to add a little line, the center line coming down further, which is going to attach to my spider butt. So that first circle is for the spider's butt and just make it nice and big so that there's enough space and then add his head. And then I'm going to be adding his legs and gel paint. Um, I don't use it very often. I usually go with acrylic when I'm doing art. And so it's a little different feeling for me and it, I can't get my lines quite as thin. That's probably in part to do with the fact that I have a special gel brush. I don't like to use, um, I like to keep my acrylic brushes for acrylic, my acrylic paint brushes for acrylic paint, my gel brushes for gel and so on and so forth. So my, my gel brush is a little thicker than my acrylic paint brush. That's probably part of the reason, but also it seems like it's a little thicker of a product, which means that you can't get as thin of lines. So regardless, just try to make your spider large enough that his legs aren't going to look like sausages. And then with blue, I'm going to be using blue glow in the dark pigment on the spider mostly. And then the yellow on his web, that yellow was my favorite color of the glow in the dark stuff. It glue the best and it also was just so bright. Now I'm going to be removing dust and applying a layer of top coat. And the pigment, when it gets in there, it does, it's not super smooth feeling. It does have a little bit of a texture to it then. It's not quite as sandy as like a glitter feeling or anything, but it does have just like a little bit of a texture. If you don't like that, make sure you use a very thick gel top coat. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this design. Please share any recreations with me on Facebook and Instagram. I would absolutely love to see them and I will see you in my next video. Bye.